aware of the impact it has. Nā mihi mahana noi o te wā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, nā mihi koutou kato, ko waio, uh, ko Katrina Coleman tōko ingoa, he National Educator Whanua Whena Ora, tōko tonga mahi. I would love to introduce you today to our guest speaker. I'll tell you a little bit about her and then I will pass the rako on to her. This is Dr. Barbara Backshall. She has worked in early childhood education for over 40 years, starting as a teacher, moving her career into leadership and advisory roles. Barbara has spent a substantial amount of time researching and lecturing on early childhood education at the University of Auckland, including work in the areas of human development from birth to eight years, early childhood curriculum, early learning in mathematics and science, children's play, infant and toddler learning environments, and developing practice guides for student teachers. We are in for a treat today, Mama and Papa who are viewing. Kia ora, Barbara. Ah, kia ora, Katrina. It's so lovely to be here and it's so lovely to be able to share one of my passions and uh, uh, well actually two. One is around tamariki young children and uh, pepe through to, to school age and also um, the ideas around how play can be so valuable for learning and for wellness and completeness of life as well. It's um, It really is an amazing topic, an amazing journey for for parents to go on with their children. You know, like uh, I took a couple of quotes out of Tafariki, which is our national early childhood curriculum. And one of them was, play is the beginning of knowledge. Um, and so I, that's so powerful when we think of play in that way, isn't it, Katrina? That it's mm. actually about how a child explores their world. I remember um, someone that I like to read, uh, Professor Gopnik, who wrote um, Baby in the Crib for Parents, mm. or Scientist in the Crib, and she talks about how babies are investigating and finding out about their world. And one of the things I loved as a parent and a teacher was that you're in that moment with the child when they're discovering something for the very first time wow. and how beautiful that is and that the natural beginning exploration where it's intentional for the child but not structured by the adults mm. is actually just how play begins and it begins with curiosity and just natural attention to things so it's like you're looking in on what's already happening you don't have to create it to be it's 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 a really fascinating and powerful tool for learning for children but i think it's useful for us as adults as well wow that's amazing barbara isn't that such a unique perspective to think about our role in being able to facilitate as parents to facilitate those first engagements with the world and that in such a meaningful way that's fabulous. All righty. So, Barbara, we're focusing specifically on the birth to 18-month age group at the moment. Do babies actually play? Is that something that you can do with a baby? I think it's something that a baby does by themselves and that you can watch. And I think the parent, when they're attuned to that, can actually focus and give more opportunity in a moment like mm. um, if a baby shows an interest in a particular piece of material or a particular soft toy that you stop there I can remember um, carrying my own child and going on a little walk and him reaching out for a leaf so we stopped at the tree Right. to allow him while I held him to play with the leaves on the tree. So it's um, it's very natural and inborn, as I said before, but it's actually about noticing what the, the really tiny baby is interested in and how they start to move and how you give them opportunity to explore mm -hmm. different materials through that. So Barbara, you used the word attuned. What does attuned mean? Ah, well, I love using that word. And it first came about by in psychology to mean uh, mothers being attuned to their babies and um, attuned to when they need feeding so that it wasn't on a cycle, it was a rhythm with the baby. But we've started to use that in education to being attuned to curiosity and interest. So attuned just means that you're noticing it in a particular way to give it value and to give it time. So if 
if a baby's at the stage where they have floor time and they're learning to roll over, mm. the attunement would be allowing the baby more time to practice. If they're right in the middle of practicing, I might hold everything for a moment until they finish their little trial. And then I would move in to do whatever routine was next. Or if I noticed, I think parents do it naturally. Like if you notice what toys or what objects children prefer to play with, the baby mm. prefers to hold, and it often becomes the toy of dominance for them, that you're just following that interest and, and enjoying how the child's learning through that interest. Right. Right. And you, you you struck a bit of a chord with me there. I'm a busy young mum myself and I know that, um, you know, we've got a lot to do. There's, I don't think expectations yeah. have ever been higher on women as far as what we're able to get through in a day and, and how connected we're going to be and, and all of this growing knowledge that we have and responsibility around what we want to provide for our tamariki for the best possible learning and, and um and development you said something about um that a baby notices or, or identifies something and cues and the parent has to be attuned to respond to that cue so what are some of the barriers that we see to um to attunement i guess i think uh, some of them are just like you said katrina it's around that um that we're busy in the moment we want to do our best for our children and mm. uh but we do have um other other commitments and responsibilities that we have to get done in the day and also if it's not your first child you've also got other children that 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 are in that mix of um and and in that that dynamic so it's not mm. feeling guilty when there's a moment you notice but you think you you make a choice ah this is not one that I can stall over because I've got these these and these responsibilities but I will make time later so um, it's like being an executive. You've just got to make uh, on the moment decisions about who and what you're going to privilege with your time, really. And, mm. um, and I think that it's good at the beginning or end of a day to actually reflect on that and reflect. So I did that yesterday. So I noticed this interest, it doesn't mean you mm. can't go back and see, well, if it was really an in sustained interest, when you take the child back to that moment, whether it's floor time or looking at a tree outside or playing with a particular um, uh, uh, resource from your kitchen, you know, a piece of kitchen equipment like a wooden spoon, if you take them back and the interest is still there, then they'll just continue it. So I, I, I think we need to take the guilt off and actually look for the moments. And in looking for the moments, I think be playful in the moments that you have with the child. Because I think when we do that as parents, it can really settle us rather mm. than make us feel guilty that we didn't have time to do what Barbara Batchel suggested in terms of, you know, the extra floor time or the extra whatever, yeah. but that, yeah. no, I didn't today, and it's okay because I know I had to, but tomorrow I might make 10 minutes for that to happen again. Yeah, yeah. right, and like you say, it can, you know, that play, that exploratory play can occur in, in a really short space of time and also doing, you know, pretty organic activities that um, that we have to do during the day otherwise. I know um, you were talking about using, you know, ki kitchen implements, you know, things that we use in the kitchen. What other things could we use around the home, you know, so that we can have organic play, you know, with babies and, and while we're, um, you know, undertaking our sort of daily tasks? Mm, good, good question, Katrina. And I think um, we tend to call it an early childhood junk play, um, but it's like you could make a basket of everyday things that are safe for babies and toddlers to play with. So it could have a bath sponge or a flannel or a wooden spoon or a metal, metal bowl. Or um, mm -hmm. I find the $2 shops quite good to find bigger things that you could um, like brushes and everyday things that actually we use as well that are easily easy for the child at that age to hold. And that's mm. the other thing to think about. And I find the trans transitioning happens then between um, 
playing to explore an object and playing to practice what families do to make meaning are a yeah. gorgeous one is when you see a child with a doll feeding it and doing mannerisms that you can place with people in your family um you know just those very simple things or practicing mm. the setting of the table or toddlers get mm. into all sorts of things and if we're watching we can see what they are but coming back to things like um uh i think a really neat resource is some is some wooden pegs and um uh the paper towel the middle of the paper towel roll and yeah. they can roll those along they can thread pegs through it like it's we we call them loose parts but um they allow children to manipulate and play with mm. the objects however they want and one mm. of the things that they've discovered and researched through that is it helps thinking skills because wow. we're not providing an object that can only do one thing the child has to decide how it's being used. And in that, that's the beginning of them purposefully thinking to be able to do something. So as young as eight, nine months, we can be starting just by having a pile of stuff, household stuff that's safe, that hasn't had pieces they could choke on or cut themselves on. But having those present and them working out how they want to play with them can be the very mm. very very um important part of growing their thinking skills yeah. yeah and you gave some great examples of different ways that babies can engage with toys or or items i know i think we've got to be careful about using toys because i think it puts this pressure that um, parents have to have certain developmental toys and like you say it's so often those items around the home and um, that can be so useful but you were describing different senses different senses of the baby yes. being able to engage you know whether it's mouth play um and there's a bit you know an element of taste and then there's touch by like using the brushes and um you know using things as drums or as you know to make to create sound and yeah. i think that's a really yeah. when you're feeling stuck for activities about what um what to play with your babies and your young tamariki thinking about different ways to engage all of their senses is a really great way to think about what they oh, might like to play Absolutely. And I, I agree with the toy word because we've started to talk in early childhood more about resourcing. So resources. Wow. And so um, I've often had conversations with parents about play where they've, they've ended up saying, but we bought these really expensive things, but all they want to play with is the paper towel roll or the yeah. box or the whatever. So it it is about um, that we don't need to spend a lot of money to have quality toys for children. And those sensory things are so important. So it's actually giving experience where they can feel grass for the first time, feel the wind on their face, feel some sand and feel um, the carpet versus the, the lino yeah. or the wooden floor or the concrete. And also I find the routines, Katrina, are very useful for that time. And bath time can be a wonderful sensory experience for, for yes. um, infants and toddlers, really. Yeah, I remember you've just brought back a beautiful memory. It's amazing, um, Mama and, and parents who are watching, how quickly you forget these beautiful memories. But we had a colander in the bath. And both my little girls, when they were, you know, probably from about nine months on, would lift up the colander, the heavy colander, lift it up and watch all the water pour through. And then they'd often put the colander on their head, you know, and that was some of their most favourite bath play was just playing with a colander. Like you say, it yeah. didn't cost me anything. It, I already had it. I didn't have a colander for several months, but that's... <laughs> That's the trouble when you go to cook, you might miss something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my pastry like brush, that's another thing that um, has come, um, ah. I'm often missing. Even now my children are a little bit older, they use, you know, the um, silicon pastry brush. Obviously, I think it's as a makeup brush these days. Ah. But, um, but yeah, it is just so lovely seeing how they interpret the use of those, you know, tools and, and resources around the house to, to having meaning. I love that. Um, I love that idea. And so 
for the parents who are feeling pressured out there around um, their child's development, around, you know, ensuring that they're starting to develop some preschool skills and, and things like that, you know, what what's your, what's your advice around how we can support parents to facilitate play for development? Um, my advice is that all play has an element of development in it because it, it is around, especially this age group, it's, and probably all age groups actually, as I think about it, it's about physical development, it's about that thinking capacity, it's about mm. emotional well-being, is, is also learning about that has become a very um, popular idea today as, as a teaching mode as well. Um, and, it, and it's also about that oral language development, I think, that people uh, really need to connect into. And I always say it's the oral language that you most enjoy. So mm. um, it's about um, do you like to sing? Do you like rhymes? Do you like poetry? Do you like just talking a story as you're walking along? It doesn't really matter, but that right. in those moments... Um, and through many experiences that are appropriate for babies through to toddlers, that mm. they're building almost um, a kite of knowledge that allows mm. them to move forward and use that kite when they're older to do pre, to do pre preschool um, yeah. um, uh, th ways of thinking and doing. It's like a, a it's like a progression, and um, I think. Uh, without overstimulating, but having a calm environment where children can explore um, and adding resources to that as they grow, that that in itself, along with parent interaction and family mm. interaction, really are the building blocks for what later become the early skills for reading and writing right. and, and maths. There's um, someone I often quote, um, who talked about and did her master's study around children's outdoor play and how later the children that had had more outdoor play by seven mm. were far better at geometry because children engage in the learning with their whole bodies. And so when they're coming across shapes and patterns and space and no space because something's taken that mm. space, they're mm. actually making meaning of all of that. So mm. if they've done it in the tangible, it becomes easier to do in the abstract. Wow. So there's a whole That's lot of connections that are being made um, in mm. terms of learning with, with the physical, with the making choices, and with mm. the oral language and those interrelational uh, moments that, that really... Uh, build children's um, knowledge and the neuroscience that and brain um, development they talk about really comes through those interactions uh, very young from from a young baby through to a toddler mm -hmm. with another adult uh, rather than just the reading of books or just um, the listening to music on the side it's actually mm -hmm. the emotional connection plus mm -hmm oral words that bring about um, the best learning um, that actually develops the brain, develops the well-being and confidence to make people more successful in life. Wow, that's incredible. Um, for those of you who have just joined us, we're talking to Dr. Barbara Backshell today and we are talking about the incredible learning through play, development through play of our youngest tamariki from birth to around 18 months. This is one of a series and we hope that you join us um, for all of the sessions that we are having um, on play. Um, and of course, this session will be recorded. You can go back and watch it from the beginning because Barbara has incredible knowledge in this space and we are learning so, so much. Barbara, you were talking about my passion subject and I want to come back to it, and that is mental well-being. So tell me about how play can support the mental well-being of our tamariki and, and probably parents too. Um, yeah, I think it's a slowing down. 
I think it's for the parents, it's going at the pace of the child. When that time is right, because we know that sometimes life is too busy and you just can't do that for the moment. But mm. um, I think the wellness comes from rich interaction with people that builds mm. their trust and um, their communication skills so they feel really linked into to a whanau, to a family unit mm. and to the people around them in their community. So it's around those, those interactions that are respectful um, but I think also what really, really helps uh, wellness is playfulness. Because yeah. if we're playing with a baby in a playful way, it's playful for the adult as well. And I think that's where games like peekaboo came from. And wow. I often, if I'm in a centre with young, very young children and you enter a room and, and babies and toddlers really need good routines and consistent people to have that sense of wellness too. I, mm. If I notice children are a little bit anxious because there's a new person in the room, I often play peekaboo because it kind of, they burst into, into laughter and then I follow their cues and it just became becomes a little ritual game and families create their own games like that I think older siblings can play like that with their um with yeah. their younger ones and uh, I think as adults do that you have so much fun I remember seeing recently a um a baby giggling on Facebook and it's infectious and so finding the things that amuse also amuse mm. the adults and they actually make mm. us slow down and make us enjoy those moments so mm. for the adult mm. I think it's playfulness and that noticing and also an awe of um what you're seeing a lot of first time things it's just so precious um yeah. and then for the child it's about the it's about being calm it's about um having constant things in your life mostly and having little surprises above that so it's a calm environment where relationships are are really strong and that playfulness mm. is really alive i think that that support wellness for very young children yeah what you're describing what i'm hearing is that particularly for mama or for the primary caregiver play yeah. can be cup filling you know emotional cup yes. filling activity because yeah. parenting is really hard it's you know mm. one of the um one of my key learnings from becoming a parent I was a plunket nurse before I was a mum and one of my key learnings around parenting was the relentlessness you know like it has its highs it has its lows but it is just constant you know it is so constant and I feel like play is one of those focuses we can easily lose track of but if we prioritize it and we're intentional about our time engaging with play it's incredibly cup filling so we because we can't pour from an empty cup you know and having those opportunities during the day where we can inter you know inject joy into the day and fill up our own emotional cups it really helps us to get through some of the hardest stuff it sure does. And learning the stuff that pl is playful to you, because not everyone does playfulness in the same right. way. And I find with my own children, what I used to do is sing. When I got to the point where I was really stressed out, I would just sing the next instructions because I love singing. And it would just bring us all back down. And for someone else, it'll be something else. And it could even just be laughter, but you just laugh at the moment because it is too stressful to do anything else. And the laughter yeah. brings the calmness because what babies do do is they pick up um, they pick up on our emotions. So if we get really uptight, it's more likely that they will get uptight. And somebody's yeah. got to break that cycle. Somebody's got to, and, it can't, and it's very rarely the baby or the toddler. It's usually the adult. And sometimes it's walking away and coming back in some you know like it's finding the cues that really work for you I think that's really real Katrina those times when you feel under pressure lack of sleep and I still have to keep going and mm. um and then and then the baby wants something and it's sort of how do I switch that switch in me to help switch the switch to calmness back for the child yeah yeah Easy yeah and you don't remind them time yeah yeah, you reminded me, Barbara, as well, um, that 
in a partnership, in a parenting partnership, if you are fortunate enough to be parenting as a peer, often there will be quite different ways of engaging with play. I know my husband was really into, you know, like wrestling and rough play and tickling and you know using a lot of gross motor skills um which was great for our girls because that sort of that part didn't really come as naturally to me whereas yeah. you know we played in different ways so it was quite complimentary it's sometimes I'd be like oh my gosh they're gonna get hurt and you know they were fine but but um yeah it's nice having different different adults to play in different ways with your tamariki Absolutely, absolutely, and children know that, and they um, they engage, they learn very young. They learn how to respond differently to different people because um, they too have personalities, and they begin to recognise that everyone else has a different personality, and some will play with yeah. them differently. Um, yeah. That's so, that's so so true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, one of the things. Um, that I saw within um, some of the background information I was privy to was something called care moments, rituals that build relationships. So for the busy parents out there, can you tell us a bit about care moments? It's taking those care moments as moments to do intentional interactions as an adult with a baby. So when you're changing a, a nappy, you might actually also have a little ritual, a little game, play with the fingers, play with the toes, make up your own rhyme. Remember something from when you were a child that you loved that people did with you. So you bring your own culture into how you play with the baby as you're changing the nappy. So it becomes, um, even if it's five minutes, it becomes five mm. minutes of just you and baby doing something mm. together that you notice the response from the baby and you notice what they enjoy doing. And so that's what you follow through with next time. And at, at mealtime can be a bit like that too, when you can actually, um, you can narrate what's happening for the child and talk about textures and talk about what they're enjoying as they begin to move from a milk formula or, or breast milk into um, solid foods and look at expressions and start using words around um oh you like that but oh you pulled a funny face what's that saying because a lot <laughs> of those early rituals around um around care moments are also times when you learn to communicate together and a lot mm. of communication of course in the beginning is just is just gesture when i say just gesture actually gesture is really really important and picking up right. on those cues because that's how they start that's how they start to learn about um, interaction with others um, and I find um, bath time can be an incredibly soothing time for both adult and child. And, you know, kicking water for the first time and then giggling because they've kicked the water. But it might not be that for some children. It might be another aspect of water um, when they're having a bath that they really that they really enjoy. So it's... Drinking um, it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, that's great. It's so lovely to hear those moments, those tasks that during the day can just feel monotonous and endless and mm, hard, mm. to be honest, that they can actually be a source of joy, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. a source of learning and, and, and connection. Yes, that's very really, much really so. Cool. Yeah. I, um, I'm a mindfulness facilitator. And so what um, what I'm hearing a lot of the time is that Play provides an opportunity for us to hone and focus on the present rather than worrying yes. about what happened before and how that didn't go well or things that could have gone better, interactions that could have gone better, that sort of thing, or worrying about the future, what's coming up, what, how that might go, that might be stressful, I've got to go back to work in a few weeks and, you know, worrying about rather than spending all of our mental space, you know, in the past or the present, honing our focus into the present, what's yes. happening now, what's in front of us mm, mm. and enjoying it because um it's en enjoyment in the moment rather than feeling well i've got to change a snappy because then i've got to do this and then we've got to do that shopping and then we've got to put on dinner and then we've got to and then we've got to it's up oh, this yeah. is my moment and it can and it can be so tiny yet so powerful as a mindful moment actually mm. with a child mm. but that language and that face-to-face -face contact is just so important for getting those um, 
to getting the neurons in the brain going. They've they've mm. done really good studies, and I think there's a lovely um, there's a lovely YouTube clip around um, a serve and return, which is a um, which is a known um, technique of of interacting with with a baby toddler or young child actually and uh, mm. you've got a lovely clip on your um, um, play center um, YouTube uh, platform right. and, I, and and it's that kind of thing that really does um, support the learning for the for the for the younger children mm. yeah that's right and it's it's an amazing responsibility. Um, yeah. or privilege, depending on how you look at it, that we are literally, as primary caregivers, as parents, growing our babies' brains. You know, they're born with a handful of neurons, Barbara was saying, which is, you know, um, brain cells. But then for the brain cell to form a connection to another brain cell, that's called a neural pathway. And it's our engagement with our PP, our, them serving something to us. They might look at something and we return the serve by following yeah. their gaze. Are you looking at the bird? Can you see the bird on the windowsill? Is there a bird? What noise does a bird make? You know, and that is what is creating that connection in the brain. And those early formative connections, it literally is laying the foundation for the future architecture, the future growth of all learning, all development all mental health and well-being so it's a huge privilege a huge responsibility yeah mm -hmm. wow when we're joking Jamie. around with that katrina we sometimes call that that we're being brain engineers wow <laughs> so parents yeah. are being brain engineers yeah. And, yeah. and, it, and it makes it realize how powerful what you do. It seems such a little thing sometimes but it's so so powerful in terms of what mm. it's doing for the child Mm, that's yeah. incredible. So we've only had a really short time together today and I have learned so much and I'm sure each of you out there who have um, had the time to engage um, have learned so much too. But for those of you who are after some further reading, some resources um, to be able to grow your thinking in this space, the Plunkett website has got some really good resources. Um, well, it will direct you to some really good resources, places like Center of the Developing Child at Harvard. Amazing, amazing video clips. Circle of Security um, is another fantastic resource. So yeah. these are resources that um, that sit on the Plunkett website that will direct you to, you know, the international leaders in the brain space um, for Tamariki. Barbara, where else can um, Fano go to to learn more? Um, I think um, a person, one of my colleagues, is going to write in um, a... Um, an address that you can go to to, to link into Certainly. the 16 areas of play that we've been working on at Best Start in relation to play for infants and toddlers and young children. So that's a lovely place to go. And the ministry has some lovely um, ideas around play. Ministry of Education, sorry. Education. Ministry of Education got it. has you as well. But uh, when you go into the Best Start um, uh, address that's, that's there, um, in the chat, what you also get behind an explanation of the area of play is some possibilities of activities that you could do with children. So it, right. can, it can be a springboard for ideas for you. So you might not have exactly the same thing, but you might have something similar at home that you could use. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic because it can sometimes, you know, as I said, as a parent, it can feel monotonous that you're doing the same sorts of things day in and day out. So it's great to get some fresh ideas and different perspectives about um, different ways that you can engage in play with your somebody. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, Barbara, is there anything you would like to say before we close our session this afternoon? I, th I think the only thing that I would say is as much as you can have fun with your children. Use that playfulness to really build your relationship. And it, it's also um, having opportunities to see different types of play and build the curiosity of your child. How fabulous. The words of wisdom from Dr. Barbara. Um, we are so grateful that you came to spend time with us today. We will pop in the chat the, um, oh, it's already there. I can see it, the 16 areas of play um, for you to have a look at from the Best Start website. But for us, that is the session. We hope you had a great time. Um, and kia pai tora. Ka kite. Kia ora.